so sunny oh anyway how are you guys welcome back to the channel i wanted to start this video by saying i hope you're okay and i just wanted to send all the positive love and the positive vibes to you guys um this week in the uk we have gone back into lockdown it is lockdown 2.0 apparently for four weeks ending on the 2nd of december however I'm not feeling too optimistic the lockdown's actually going to end. I feel like it's going to be extended. But anyway, either way, I just wanted to say I hope you're well. I hope you're looking after yourself. And that if you are self-isolating, that you're okay, basically. Um, so I thought it would be appropriate to make a video all about training at home. And now I know the concept of training at home could be really scary for some people. And I can imagine a lot of you watching this video now might feel really lost and not really sure what to do. But I hope this video will act as sort of a guide to training at home, put your mind at ease and give you some useful tips for making progress even when you can't go to the gym. So we're going to be doing like a little overview of training at home. I'm going to give you some training tips. I'm going to talk to you guys about equipment, um, whether you need to buy it and if you do choose to buy it, where to get it from. And then also at the end of the video, I'm going to basically do workouts in action. So I'm going to show you some minimal equipment based workouts and then I'm also going to show you some bodyweight workouts and also give you guys an example workout split. So yeah, this video is gonna have all the value. It is literally so bright, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't complain because we like the sun, but Christ, it's so hard to vlog. Oh, at least my highlighter's popping. Wow, vain. <coughs> anyway, I've completely lost my train of thought. What was I saying? I don't know. Basically, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up if you are excited. Um, let me know in the comments below also if you have any questions throughout the video and I'll try and answer them the best I can. And of course, subscribe to my channel. We are now at 1.5K subscribers, which is small to some people, but honestly is so big for me and it means so, so much. So yeah, all the support is greatly appreciated. But anyway, I'm gonna make a coffee. Let's sit down and just give you a little bit of information about training at home. Mm -mm, come to me, my favorite coffee. So good, there's nothing like a freshly grown coffee. So guys, I think I actually have a little bit of an addiction to pumpkin spice. I got this bottle like, not gonna lie, about two weeks ago. I mean, two weeks is kind of a long time, but I've literally, you can see, I have nearly drained this whole bottle in two weeks. So not proud of it, not gonna lie. Ooh, yeah, oh bloody hell, that was a lot, okay. A bit sweet, but so good. Mm. All right, let's get comfy. Roxy, you gonna come up? Gonna go and sit with mommy. Up, up, up. Come on then. Oh, Roxy, you can jump up. Come on. Oh. She told me the other day that she loves you guys. She told me, didn't you? Didn't you? She said, I love mummy's subscribers. Especially when they like and comment on the video, yeah? Okay, so as I said before, I just wanted to sit down and sort of speak to you guys about training at home, give you advice and that sort of thing. The one thing that I want to say before we start is obviously we are all currently in different circumstances. Um, we have different availabilities of space, of equipment. Um, also, before lockdown, we were all on different programs. So the one thing I wanted to say is that obviously the advice I'm giving now is just generalized. Um, I can't give out specific advice because I don't know who's watching the video and I don't know what you're currently doing. So basically just take everything that I'm saying with a pinch of salt. I'm really sorry if some parts um, don't sort of relate to what you're doing or aren't relevant to you, but I'm gonna try and cover as much as I can. Before we get going into sort of training at home, how to make progress, that sort of thing, 
I thought we would start this video with some positives. We all need a little bit of positivity in our lives. So I'm gonna list a few positives about training at home. So number one, the best thing about training from home is, doesn't matter what you look like, you can wear anything when you're training at home. Matching sets, nah. Matching socks, don't have to worry about it. Wanna train in your PJs? You can train in your PJs. No one's looking at you. Um, you just can focus on your training and focus on nothing else. Secondly, training at home saves so much time. Like you don't have to travel to the gym. You don't have to worry about walking in the cold mornings or driving, you're saving petrol, that sort of thing. Training at home, in a sense, is so easy, so less time consuming. You can just get up, get it done. It is quite nice just doing it from the comfort of my home. Number three, now girls, I know you're gonna relate to this one. No creepy men. There's no creepy men at home, is there? You don't have to worry about them staring at you. The number one thing I hate about going to the gym, I love the gym, but the one thing I hate, it's like you're doing a squat and they make it so obvious that they're staring at your bum. Like they, they don't even do a little, a glance. It's like, don't get me started on this one. But anyway, when you're at home, you don't have to worry about that. And also you just don't have to worry about anyone else in general. Basically just, get to be unsociable, which I quite like, to be honest. And finally, I feel like this is the most sensible and the most important one, is that training at home gives you a really good chance to focus on things that you either don't bother doing in the gym or you neglect in the gym. So a really good example is body weight strength. I think people are always so focused on increasing the weights and lifting really heavy, but by training at home and having to dial back the weight, I think this is actually really good. And also another one is like cardiovascular fitness. So whether that's like HIIT training or running, you might be used to going to the gym and always lifting really heavy weights, but maybe lockdown is a good chance to focus on running and something different like that, or flexibility. And maybe this time is actually exactly what you needed. So yeah, be positive. Let me have a sip of my coffee before we begin the main part of the video. Mm. Okay, so before we go into how to make progress in the gym and actually training from home, I thought I'd delve into the main issue or the main thing um, that a lot of people need to address when training at home and that is equipment, availability of equipment um, and training space, that sort of thing. So when you're training at home, um, if you wanna add resistance or weights to your workouts, you kind of have two like obvious options. The first one is of course buying training equipment. So this could be barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells, bands, that sort of thing. Now, buying equipment isn't necessary and you don't have to, but I would probably say that if you have the money um, and if you have the resources, do go out and buy some equipment. Um, nowadays, you can actually get equipment for fairly cheap and there are a few places that you can go. Uh, for example, if you are in the UK, Argos, they are really good. They sell lots of like dumbbell kits. Um, so you can get like a range of weights and they're not too expensive and they also do home delivery. Um, or there are other places like Amazon, Amazon's a really good one, Facebook Marketplace if you wanna get secondhand equipment. Um, and then there are also some other online stores such as where I got my weights from. Um, at the beginning of last lockdown, um, as things were sort of like heading into lockdown, I was a bit worried that the gyms would close. So ahead of time, I went and bought a set from a place called Fitness Superstore. Now, not gonna lie, I did go a little bit extreme and I did get a full barbell set, which had like 100 kg worth of plates. Um, it was about 170 pounds, which I thought was actually really affordable considering um, how many weights you get. Definitely check them out, they are really good. Getting equipment and buying it is definitely not essential. There is another option, and that brings us on to our second option, which is household objects. Seriously, you'll be surprised how many things in your house weigh like enough to do a workout with. There's literally so many household objects you can use that you can find like in your kitchen, in your garden, or just lying around the house. I've got a few of my faves here. So here I've got like a carton of soy milk. So this is one liter of soy milk. You can use tins. Tins are really good for things like lateral raises where you naturally don't use a really heavy weight anyway. One really, really good hack um, actually is getting a backpack and then filling it with heavy objects. So if you get a backpack, you can fill this with cans, books, anything and literally make it as heavy as you want and then obviously you can put it on your back and do squats and guys don't forget that if you're using household objects you can weigh these so if you have a pair of scales just pop them on you'll know exactly how much they weigh and then you're still able to sort of progress and track with weights just like you would in the gym okay so when training from home the main obstacle or problem we face is the one i've literally just been talking about and that is the lack of weight and the lack of overload. A key driver of muscle growth and hypertrophy is progressive overload. So this 
is sort of the idea that over time uh, we need to be doing more and we need to be progressing and in order for our muscles to grow they need to adapt to a stimulus beyond what they're used to so usually at the gym this would be lifting a heavier weight um, obviously training at home this becomes a little bit harder because we have less overload potential when you go to the gym my coffee machine are you done but yeah, anyway, so when you go to the gym, um, you're faced with a lot more of variety, a lot more overload potential, we can lift heavier weights. However, when we're training at home, this ability to increase and this overload is either taken away completely or reduced if you have um, equipment. So the question we're faced with when we train at home is, okay, we're lacking this overload, we don't have this weight, so what can we do to make up for the lack of weight and the lack of overload? And this is where three key training principles are gonna come in. This is volume, intensity, and frequency. So volume is the total amount of work done across the week, and this will be made up of things like weight, reps, and sets. Intensity is how hard one person needs to work. Uh, but basically, that's just like how much effort needs to be done in the workout. And then you've got frequency, so that's how often you're training, um, both how often you're training in the week, but how often you're also training certain muscle groups. And these are three things that are gonna be really important when training at home. So right now, when we're training at home, we can't control the weight, but what we can control is the number of sets we're doing, the number of reps we're doing, the intensity of our workouts, and our training frequency. And these are all things that we're gonna manipulate Manipulate and focus on when training at home to make up for the lack of weight. So let's start with volume. So as I said before, training volume is made up of weights, sets and reps. Because we can't really increase the weight at home or we might not be able to as much as when we're in the gym, what we're gonna do instead is we are going to increase the rep range and also increase some of our sets. So in the gym, for example, you might have been working in maybe like a six to eight rep range if you're focusing on strength or maybe like an eight to 12 rep range if you've been focusing on hypertrophy. At home, we're gonna push this a bit higher. Again, this is gonna be different for everyone, so I'm not giving specific advice here, but you might work more in like a 15 to 20 rep range, or you might work more towards failure. So this is called AMRAP. Um, so AMRAP refers to as many reps as possible. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna push your muscles towards failure. Instead of giving up after 12 reps, really ask yourself, can I push this to 15? Can I push this to 20? Remind yourself that you haven't got that weight there, so you're gonna have to get a little bit more volume in other ways. So yeah, increasing reps and sets. Okay, so the second training principle, and I think this is actually a really, really, really important one when training at home, is intensity. So intensity refers simply to how hard we are working in a session. One of the best ways to increase intensity during lockdown is by using time under tension and manipulating tempo. Um, so when we do an exercise, um, tempo basically refers to how fast we're performing it. So the eccentric contraction is where the muscle is lengthening. So for example, in a squat, this is when we're going to be coming down from the squat. A really good way to increase the, the intensity is to slow down the eccentric phase. So for example, you might make the eccentric phase when you're lowering down from the squat last three seconds. What this is gonna do is this is gonna make your muscle work really hard and literally put it under tension, and that is gonna cause muscle damage, which is a key driver of muscle growth. Say all you have is like a 10 or 20 kg dumbbell, and usually you'd be squatting like 60. We obviously can't use 60 at home, but what we can do is really slow down the reps hold that pause and you would be so surprised how hard that is especially if you're pairing that with like a 15 to 20 rep range honestly other ways of increasing the intensity can be adopting certain training systems so for example supersets and triceps so a superset is where you perform two exercises back to back with no rest in between sets so usually um, after we finish a set we would rest for maybe like 60 seconds to 90 seconds and then redo another set but with a superset you have two exercises back to back this makes it a lot more intense as you're not having a break. Okay, so the final sort of training principle that we can manipulate when training at home is our training frequency. So this will refer mainly to our training split. So a training split is basically how many times you train a week. Um, this will differ for everyone, but generally in the gym, a lot of people tend to follow like an upper lower body split. Now this is absolutely fine, but when training at home, I'm actually gonna give you a little bit of different advice to this. Again, we're all different, so if this doesn't suit you, don't worry, I'm not saying you have to go and do this. But when training at home, I would definitely advise um, maybe considering doing mixed muscle group workouts. Now, the reason I'm saying to try mixed muscle group is usually when we're in the gym, 
Um, a reason people split upper and lower body separately is that because um, we need sufficient time for our muscles to rest. But what you have to remember is that training at home, we're not doing as much, much damage as we would be in the gym. Yes, we're adopting those training principles and we're increasing the intensity, but overall we aren't going to be doing as much damage um, as when we're going to the gym and we aren't really going to need as much rest. Now what this does, this gives us an opportunity to actually increase the frequency of the muscle groups we're training, so it can basically allow us to train a muscle group more frequently across the week. Again, this is going to add to like the total volume, the total amount of work. Remember that lockdown, as I said before, can be used as a time to introduce new types of training into your program. Now that you're training from home and you're potentially limited on weight, you could introduce new types of training. So this could be like CrossFit type training or like HIIT training or cardiovascular work. Just remember that if you haven't got the weight and you can't buy equipment and you haven't really got many household objects, that doesn't mean that you can't train. This might just mean that you have to mix up your training ever so slightly and try something new. So, what I've done, you didn't ask for this and you might not want it, so feel free to bin this off completely. But what I have done is I've put together a little example workout split for a week of training. Okay, so I'm gonna put the weekly split up on the screen now. So here you can see I've got Monday to Sunday um, and we have three training resistance days, which are gonna be more like typical bodybuilding um, workouts, straight sets, that sort of thing. And then two times a week, we've introduced some circuits. How exciting. Um, I feel like overall as a week, this type of training is exciting. It gets you, you know, you're not just doing five days in a row of bodybuilding that you're finding boring and you're comparing to the gym and thinking it's rubbish. You're doing a mixture of resistance-based sessions and circuit sessions. So on Monday, we've got a quads, calf and shoulders workout. On Tuesday, we have a glutes, hamstring and core workout. Wednesday is gonna be our rest day. Thursday is gonna be a circuit complex, which is an eight minute Tabata. So what this is, is it's gonna be, I think, four exercises, and you can do 20 seconds on, um, 10 seconds rest, and you do this for four rounds. This is really high intensity. Um, this can be done with weights, or it can be done with body weight. Um, a really high intensity workout is gonna get your heart rate going, make you feel really, really good. Then on Friday, we have our last resistance based session of the week, which is going to be upper glutes and core, um, a rest day on Saturday, and then Sunday, we're going to be doing our second circuit complex, which is a 20 minute AMRAP. So an AMRAP workout, you might not have heard this before, but AMRAP, as I said before, refers to as many reps as possible. But for this workout, it refers to as many rounds as possible. So you're going to have like five or so exercises um, for a certain number of reps. And basically the goal of the session is just to complete as many rounds as possible. Um, AMRAP workouts, I think are really, really good for lockdown because you can see a clear progression. So for example, if you have five exercises and they're all maybe like 10 reps or something, you might get um, four rounds in 20 minutes for your first time but the next time you can go and you can try and beat that so you can say okay I really want to get more than four rounds I want to get five rounds or four and a half rounds that sort of thing so it's a clear way to progress um, and it's just basically a really fun way of training so yeah that is an example week. Now guys, I would love to go and give you all of these workouts and go into detail about everything, but we really don't have time for that. What I am going to do in this video, as I said earlier, is I'm going to be showing you um, two workouts in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an option of a workout with weights, with minimal equipment, which is going to be dumbbells and resistance bands. And then I'm also going to show you a body weight only workout. It is kind of coming up to lunchtime now. So I'm thinking what I might do is I might have my lunch first, eat my lunch, and then we'll delve into the workouts. Um, but yeah, hope that was clear. I finished, no, I didn't finish my coffee. I never do when I do a video like this. Always forget about it. Mm. All right, guys, we are ready to train. We're in our set. This is a my protein set. You can't really see, but you'll see when I'm training. This is the my protein seamless ultra, one of my fave sets. And I'm going to have a my protein BCA energy drink. And they are literally so delicious. Mm. I'm gonna be doing two workouts. The first workout I'm gonna be doing is a quads, shoulders, and calf workout. So this is a mixed muscle workout focusing on a little bit of upper and a little bit of lower body. The only equipment that I'm gonna need for this workout is a pair of dumbbells and a band. So it's really, really minimal, really easy. And you know, if you've got dumbbells, this is gonna be a really good workout for you. 
If you haven't got dumbbells or any equipment, don't worry because the second workout is going to be a full body weight workout and this one is going to focus on upper body and core. It's going to be more of like a circuit style based workout so we haven't got weights but what we are going to do is we're going to do a really high intensity, get the heart rate up, get your muscles screaming, that sort of workout. So yeah, two different workouts but both with similar muscle focuses and both really really fun. So without further ado, I'm going to down this and let's get going people. Mm. All right guys, so the first exercise we have for this workout is going to be a front racked dumbbell Bulgarian split squat. Now split squats are so, so difficult. They're literally like the devil's exercise, but they're really, really good for your quads. The goal for this exercise is going to be a two second eccentric phase. So you can see here, I'm coming down nice and slowly for two seconds. I'm pausing at the bottom of the movement, then I'm driving back up after one strict second and then pausing for a second at the top. This is really gonna do some great muscle damage and will make the workout feel so much harder without adding any more weight. We're gonna be doing three sets, 12 reps per leg and then resting for a minute to a minute and a half between exercises. So next up, we have our first superset of the workout. So this is going to be an upper body superset. We're gonna be doing a standing dumbbell shoulder press superset with a dumbbell overhead extension. As I said earlier on in the video, a superset means that we aren't gonna be resting between exercises, which is gonna make it way more intense and really get your arms and shoulders and the whole of your upper body burning. We're gonna be doing this for four sets, so more than the Bulgarian split squats and for both exercises we're going to be doing 12 reps. After you've performed both exercises rest for one minute to one minute and a half and thank me later for the pain. Also had to add this in couldn't cope with the fact I fell over honestly. I do this all the time guys um, so just thought you would laugh at me you know because we all need a good laugh sometimes. So our next exercise is also going to be a superset but this time we're going to be supersetting an upper body exercise with a lower body exercise. So our first one is going to be dumbbell lateral raises and we're going to superset this with dumbbell creeper lunges. Now guys have you ever tried creep lunges? They are so horrible. They're very quad focused. Essentially, all you're gonna do is drop down into like a half squat position. One set is two steps forward and two steps back. By the eighth rep, honestly, your quads are absolutely burning. And what's really great about these lunges is that going into the deficit and the crouching position makes it a lot more difficult, even if you don't have much weight. So after you have completed the lateral raises and the creeper lunges, rest for a minute to a minute and a half, and then move on to the next exercise. It's gonna be a calf focus exercise. So this is a unilateral dumbbell step calf raises. Unilateral literally just refers to single leg. Now for this exercise, you do ideally need a step. As you can see in the video, I'm actually using a weighted plate. If you don't have a weighted plate, that's absolutely fine. Um, you could use something like a book, a box, a step. If you have stairs in your house, stairs are a really good place to perform calf raises. So for this, we're gonna be doing three sets with 10 to 15 reps on each leg, and you're gonna be resting for a minute to a minute and a half after those ones before we move on to our final exercise. So this exercise is going to be an AMRAP, which refers to as many reps as possible. We're gonna be doing wide grip push-ups. Now you have two options here. So you have the option to perform a full push-up or a knees push-up, whatever suits you. The knees is obviously gonna be a lot easier. But yeah, we're gonna be going for as many reps as possible. Um, and we're doing this for three sets, pushing it to complete failure and then resting for one minute in between. What I love about putting AMRAP at the end of a workout is it's a really good mental challenge is kind of saying to yourself, look, push yourself as hard as you can. This is the last exercise you've got to do. Um, and it's just a really good chance to absolutely ruin your body, which is what we want to do, guys. We want to do that. <sighs> We're finished. Um, I'm feeling quite tired and kind of regretting the fact that I now have to do another workout. <laughs> but it's okay because I wanted to show you guys both. I probably should have filmed these on different days, but... I need to upload this video so oh well we're gonna go ahead with the body weight workout i wouldn't usually suggest doing these two workouts followed by each other obviously that's going to be too much exertion but obviously i'm doing it for the purpose of filming so this is going to be an upper body and core circuit we're not going to have weights like we just had so we're going to be performing each exercise in succession for 30 seconds on so 30 seconds work followed by five seconds rest and then at the end of each circuit we're going to be resting for one minute before moving on to the next circuit. So yeah, I'm ready, let's go. And you gals tired. I need another energy drink. 
All right, squad, let's get going with the second workout. So the first circuit is gonna be made up of four exercises with 30 seconds on and five seconds off. So the first exercise is going to be 30 seconds of mountain climbers. Then we're gonna rest for five seconds before moving on to wide grip push-ups. Like the other workout, feel free to go on your knees if needed. So 30 seconds of push-ups, then five seconds rest and onto banded upright row. I did use a long band for this. You can swap this out if you don't have a band but a band is a really good way to create a bit of extra tension. 30 seconds of that, five seconds rest. And then our last exercise, it's going to be V-ups. V-ups is a really good core exercise. These are really challenging actually. Um, but after 30 seconds of that, we're gonna be going straight in to the first exercise again, which will be mountain climbers. We're gonna do this three times and then we're gonna rest for one minute and that is circuit one complete. So circuit two is the same concept as circuit one. However, we're only gonna be doing three exercises. So the first exercise, exercise is high to low planks. This is a fab core exercise, which also really ruins your shoulders, which is why it goes so lovely in this upper body workout. We'll be doing that for 30 seconds, resting for five seconds, and then moving straight into a banded overhead press. I did this on my knees just because my um, band isn't really stretchy enough for me to stand up, but just do whatever works for you. 30 seconds of that, five second rest, then onto our last exercise, which is body weight tricep dips. This is such a good exercise to do at home. They're so challenging and you can literally use anything like a sofa, a step, a chair like I am. So yeah, 30 seconds of tricep dips, five seconds rest, and then straight into the high to low planks. We're gonna do this for three rounds. Then we're gonna rest for one minute and we'll move on to our third circuit. So the third circuit is the same concept as circuit one. We've got four exercises. These ones are fairly back focused. So we're gonna start with lying dual supermans. If you can try and pause or squeeze at the top of the movement, this is gonna get a really, really, really good tension in your back. We're gonna do this for 30 seconds, then rest for five seconds and move on to hollow holds. Hollow holds are a really difficult, but very, very rewarding core exercise. The idea is to hold this in a tight position for 30 seconds. Then we're gonna rest for five seconds and move on to banded pull aparts 30 seconds rest for five seconds you know what's coming and then it's going to be the last exercise plank shoulder taps again this is really good like the high to low planks it's going to really engage your core but also um, make your arms and your shoulders feel really tired so we're going to be doing that for 30 seconds resting for five and then restarting the circuit do that for three rounds and then rest for one minute on the final round before we move on to our final circuit so circuit four is slightly different to the other circuits um, we're going to have three different exercises which we're going to perform twice so six exercises in total 30 seconds on five seconds off but this time we've just got one round so we're going to start with 30 seconds of lying leg raises rest for five seconds then we're going to go into 30 seconds of butterfly sit-ups rest for five seconds and then we'll be going into 30 seconds of static plank then we're going to repeat that so we're going to do another lot of lying leg raises another lot of butterfly sit-ups and then a final static plank and that is the end of the circuit you've smashed it you're feeling good you're feeling sweaty well done sis my bun is completely fallen out <sighs> All right, guys, that is it. That is everything I have to say and I wanted to do in this video. I really hope this video has been helpful for, for you and sort of gives you a little bit of like confidence of training at home and shows you that training at home really doesn't have to be boring. It's all down to mindset. If you embrace lockdown positively and training from home positively, then you will have some good workouts. And also, I hope this made you realize as well that you don't have to stress about making progress necessarily. Um, you know, lockdown's a hard situation and as long as you're moving your body and feeling good, and you know your mental health is in check that is the most important thing comment down below your current situation if you need any advice or if you have any advice for other people maybe we can start like a little conversation in the comments i hope you guys are well i hope you have an amazing week and i will see you next week for my food challenge video which i'm so excited about because i love a good food challenge i know you guys do too so yeah Thanks for watching, give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also share this video with your friends, your family, anyone else who you think needs help in lockdown with their workouts. And yeah, just be happy, be safe, be healthy and be grateful always. Love you guys so much and I'll see you next time.